Hello, friend, and welcome back to the Beyond the Shallows podcast. I'm your host, Jason Hunley. I'm so glad that you decided to spend some time with me today. Uh, today, I am, uh, if you're on YouTube here, I'm hanging out here in my kid's school room. And so uh, there's plenty to look at in the back. You can even find a little party kitchen back here somewhere on this side. And uh, <laughs> and some, uh, some art from a good friend of mine, Chris Beck, is hanging in the back here and a bunch of school books. Um, that probably would be a good idea if I took a second pass at some of those, but you know what, for right now, I'm just happy to be here and, uh, and talking to you. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to hop on today and talk a little bit. Uh, this morning I had the distinct honor of, um, joining some dear brothers in Christ at a weekly men's breakfast. If you don't have like a weekly thing, that's outside of just your normal church experience on a Sunday morning um, or a Wednesday night, whatever, like you're really missing out. Uh, there's something that happens when a bunch of people decide, you know what, we're weekly going to pursue the Lord together. We're going to get together and we're going to talk about just what's going on in our lives. You know what, we started out this um, I. Uh, one guy in particular, another guy named Jason, decided to start this men's group, um, that, and we we kind of put some guidelines around it, and it was super super easy and super pure um, in in its genesis, and, and basically all that we did was just say, you know what, people want to make sure that they get to work on time, right? So we're always going to end right at seven thirty, so that if anybody has to be across town by eight o'clock, they can probably make it, right? So we're gonna we're gonna end right at seven thirty. Uh, we're going to start right at 6:30, and uh, and we're gonna ha- we're gonna provide a little bit of meals for them. And so, uh, we had a guy, uh, Harold, is is always ready to serve us some wonderful breakfast, and it is a blessing to have him involved because he just kind of takes care of everything. Uh, and on the weeks that he's not there, um, Nicole, Jason's wife, makes some uh, very simple but really delicious meatballs and uh, breakfast meatball things, sausages, and uh, yeah, they're just really good. But it's not about the food, it's about the people, it's about hanging out, it's about pursuing the Lord together. And we started out doing um, one particular study, we did a Matt Chandler study, and it and it walked through uh, the Beatitudes, and uh, that, was, that was a really, really great study, uh, kind of the splash of the beginning of a new group getting together, we had a lot of guys showing up. And then uh, from there, we started into a foundation study, just the foundations of the faith study with David Platt. And that one was really good. But you know what has happened is that over the last few weeks and over the summer, it, it started out in the school year, everybody was pretty consistent. And then the, in the summer, everybody got a little less consistent. And it, it turned out that we weren't uh, attracting the guys who um, we're kind of on the fringes of the faith, but really the guys who were showing up week after week were the guys who were really dedicated to um, growing in Christ and already involved in some leadership in the church. And so we just kind of shifted gears unintentionally. Um, there was one week where Jason came in with something on his heart and he just kind of started talking to me beforehand. I was like, you know what, let's just skip the video and let's talk about this. Let's see if we can generate some discussion. And so we did. We we uh, we sat back and we we started talking about that kind of stuff, um, just whatever was on our heart that day. And my goodness, the conversations really kind of started to take off. And and they can be a little awkward, like to begin with. Uh, sometimes the guys don't really. Uh, it's super early in the morning. I'm not super talkative in the morning, and so I get it. Uh, like I need at least like one and a half cups of coffee in me to really be able to put two thoughts together. Um, but man, just the, the dedication to like stick with it and keep pursuing the Lord together in community. There's something that happens, man. And, uh, Jason doesn't need much to get going. And so, um, I don't think I'll ever be able to get him onto the, the podcast here. He kind of hates public speaking. Um, and I, I think he would even be uncomfortable if I was saying that he was like leading the group because really um, he's just started to facilitate some conversation and come in with something that is on his heart that is just, hey, this is what the Lord is doing this week. And so my encouragement to you this week is just simply that, like you don't have to be like some massive theologian or have something groundbreaking uh, on your heart in order to have an impact on other people. You can just show up and start talking about what God is already doing, and it can be incredibly powerful 
um, in a room. And so I, I just want to encourage you, if you're feeling like, man, I'm, I'm not equipped, I don't have necessarily like the greatest thing to share, it's all right, man. Like show up and, and start talking and um, tell people what the Lord is doing in your heart and in your life, and you might see uh, him start to do some really amazing things with it. So what happened this morning and why I want to talk about it is just I had I've been looking at uh, this this internship thing and I can talk about that here and I'm, I'm sure I'll talk about that in future podcasts but the big the big like push for this internship and what this ministry does is called infusion in Knoxville and the thing that they do really well is they talk about identity in Christ and freedom in Christ and those are two of the pillars on which this whole ministry is built. Wonderful. Uh, I think people need to know that. I, I agree with them that the lack of walking in the freedom and your true identity in Christ is the greatest cause of people not getting on board with, um, you know, a deeper relationship with Jesus, walking in the power and the authority of their faith. Like I see it all the time where people just become a Christian and they just kind of like coast through life or they never go into the deeper parts of, of their spiritual walk. And so that's why I wrote my book. Um, I, I want people to, to mind scripture and mind their relationship with God for all of the benefits that they can get from it. Um, not just because not for selfish reasons, but because it's there for them. It's the, it, Jesus wants them to take it and, uh, and walk in it. And so we might as well like grow in that area and and grow in that way and and continue to pursue pursue Christ pursue spiritual maturity and uh, understanding your identity in Christ and understanding the freedoms that you have in Christ are are foundational to making sure that that can happen in your heart and in your life and if you don't know what God has purchased for you if you don't know the freedom and the 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 identity that you have in Christ then uh, that's a big problem because there are things that have happened at the very moment that you become uh, part of the family of God, at the very moment that you um, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that uh, Jesus has saved you and, and has, is, the, is the, um, the Son of God and died in your place. And um, man, as soon as you know that, uh, like you're in the family. Right. And and so like there's there are things that the Holy Spirit has done to make sure that that you are equipped to live a life um, that is a Christian life. And, um, yeah, I've just been hanging out in, in Romans chapter eight and Ephesians chapter one. And what what um, and those are more of by, like the identity stuff. But what Jason said this morning is that I've already, so I personally, this Jason has already been in, you know, this topic and this mindset and this mind frame. I've been in here for like two or three weeks because I've been trying to pray through, Lord, is it the right thing to, for me to, to join uh, Infusion for this internship uh, that I want to do? And um, and I, 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 last night I finally, you know, filled out all the paperwork to apply for the internship. Um, and so, uh, pending, pending my approval at this point, I'll be, I'll be raising some support and, um, and joining infusion for, uh, the next nine months in order to, you know, grow closer to Christ and understand my identity, the authority that I have in Christ and the freedom that I have to walk in the fullness of everything that he has for me. And uh, I'm really, really excited about it. And so I come in to this men's breakfast this morning. And of course, what is Jason all fired up about? He's listened to a podcast from one of his friends down at Apostles in uh, Atlanta. He was on a podcast and that guy's talking about freedom in Christ. <laughs> and I was just like sitting back, like my eyes were all groggy. I get up super early to go to this men's breakfast and but I don't want to wake anybody up I've got four kids in the house and my wife I don't want to wake her up before she needs to be up and so I'm getting ready in the dark and everything and so like I get into the the room where we're having this thing and the very th first thing I do is I walk through the door and like I'm like blinking and kind of rubbing the sleep out of my eyes because I haven't been around any type of light at all I've just been in the darkness the whole morning and then I walk in and it's like I'm smacked in the face with this reminder that like the Lord is doing something and and he's he's really 
like this this concept of the freedom that we have in him is really powerful. And the thing that Jason talked about this morning is that, you know, usually when he thought about freedom, um, it's in the context of, yeah, I'm, I'm free to do what I want to do, or I'm, uh, you know, I can, I can chase the things that I want to chase. Uh, there's no stipulations on me or, or whatever, but, um, the context of the podcast that he referenced was that part of the freedom that Christ purchased for us is that we have freedom from the bondage that we have, uh, the, the bondage of sin, right? Like we have, we have freedom and, uh, and we can overcome, uh, that temptation or, or whatever because of freedom specifically. And so freedom in Christ isn't just like, self-helpy type things. Uh, freedom in Christ isn't just, you know, like, well, you can do what you want and God has forgiven you uh, because of his grace. No, freedom in Christ is you are free from the power of sin and death in your life. You are free from the old man that you were. And now you have the freedom to walk in the fullness of everything that God has called you to be. And But if you don't know who God has called you to be, then that freedom seems really void and vacant, right? It's just like, oh, uh, another set of rules, but you're calling it freedom, right? And so it was cool because he was talking about that. And then like all of these verses started flooding to, to mind. And, um, you know, Romans chapter 8, verse 14 and, and following, it says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. All right, so catch that really quick. The spirit that you receive does not make you slaves so that you fear again. Rather, okay, so this is a but statement. This is a, this is a compare and comp- contrast statement. So what, what I would expect if somebody was like, you're not a slave, but you are, the next word that I would expect to see in that, sentence is you're not a slave but Christ has set you free and that is true and we see that in scripture but look at look at what the opposite of of slavery is in this verse it's really really interesting to me verse 15 of Romans chapter 8 the spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you can live in fear again rather the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship So in Romans chapter 8, verse 15, the opposite of slavery is a new identity. And it made me think like, like, okay, I'm imagining like a post-Civil War, you know, there were a lot of slaves who wanted to stay with their masters and wanted to work with him. Now, the government was mandating that now those those masters had to pay the slaves but for all intents and purposes and uh and attitudes i'm sure that there were some slaves who wanted to stay on the plantation picking the cotton maybe they were treated well or maybe they were just afraid of uh, going out and facing for persecution for being a freed slave but but the the fact of the matter is there were there were some slaves that didn't claim their new identity as free men and women. They wanted to stay where it was comfortable. They wanted to stay doing the same things that they were doing before. And, and the government had to step in and say, okay, you're not slaves. You're acting a lot like slaves, but we're going to have to make sure that your masters are paying you now. Right? That's not the type of relationship that we have with God. Right. And I feel like a lot of times we act like that, like we were slaves to sin. Right. We're, we're living on the plantation. We're picking the cotton and maybe our experience there is brutal or maybe it's not. But then we are set free because of our life in Christ. But what we assume that means is that we keep we don't, we maybe don't work in the same field or like maybe our, our title is a little bit different, but pretty much the job is the same. We're just trying to be good people. We're just trying to like make it, you know what I'm saying? Like we're just kind of, we're going to keep like working at it and we're not going to 
we're not going to do anything very much different with our lives, but it's, it's but we're just going to kind of continue to exist in this state, even though like the status has changed. But what this verse is telling us is that not only are we no longer slaves to sin and death, and therefore our responsibilities have changed, but the place where we live changes. Like it's like we are we are brought out of the slave shack, the small house next to the plantation, and we are brought into the plantation itself. We are brought into the family itself. We sit down at the dinner table next to the master, and he calls us a son. He calls us a daughter. He calls us a free man. And then he calls us to go and do the things that free people do, not to continue to work in the fields, not to continue to work and act like you're in slavery. He gives us authority. He gives us sonship. He, he gives us the, uh, a, a, a power, really, an authority to, to be his ambassador. And so it's not just, goodness, yeah. And, and so that freedom is, is all based and wrapped up in identity. I, I just want to encourage you to go and maybe that, I don't know if that example is too, I don't know, like the whole slavery and, and racism thing is, is pretty uh, fiery in today. And so let, I, I want to treat it with respect, but I, I also want to, to give you a very clear visual in your head about like the, the identity that you have in Christ should change everything about how you view not just your role on this earth but how you view yourself and and so what, what I want to encourage you to do is go to Ephesians chapter 1 and start reading through Ephesians chapter 1 and uh, again I'm going to do something a little weird and we're going to mess with some pronouns here which is a whole nother topic and I'm not going to get into that in this podcast at all but there there are a lot of we's there's a lot of you and I's in uh, Ephesians chapter 1. I want you to take each one of those things that Paul says is true of us as a people, as true of a we, and then make it personal for you, okay? And so let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms, with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So read that verse as it is, and then go back through and personalize it for yourself. Praise be to God and the Father of my Lord, Jesus Christ, who has blessed me in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Do you really believe that? Have you have you claimed that truth over your own life and over your own self, you are, if you are in Christ, you are, are blessed in the heavenly realms with everything, every spiritual blessing in Christ. Verse four, he chose you before him in the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. When Jesus looks at you, you are home, holy and blameless in his light, sight, in love, he predestined you for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with the pleasure, uh, with his pleasure and will. So it wasn't just that he wanted to create a legal exchange to purchase you, but he, before the world was even begun, he knew that he wanted you and he wanted you in his family. And it made him happy to do it, to do the work of sending his own son to the cross to die so that you could be adopted into his family in accordance with his pleasure and will. This is what I want to do. And this is what's going to make me happy is I'm going to sacrifice my own son so that I can adopt you into my family. That's what that verse is saying. Now, it, I feel like it loses some of its strength when we use us, us's and we's in there. So, so just go through all of Ephesians chapter one and look at all of those incredible promises and that that uh, Paul gives to the church at Ephesus. And do you really ask yourself, do I really believe that this is 
this is true of me, that I have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, that I've been adopted into his family, that, that he has, you know, chosen me and equipped me and, and it was his pleasure to do it. And he finds joy in me and he wants to be my friend. And there are so, so, so many promises in scripture. There are so many um, declarations of relational closeness in scripture where God is saying that he wants to be just absolutely so tight in relationship with you. Like, don't don't just skim over those and don't just ignore them because it's, it's we and, and it's not just the church of Ephesus that Paul is writing to there. Like if you are in Christ, you are one of the we. And so personalize that and claim that truth over your life because there is a greater form of freedom in Christ available to you if you're willing to take that step and willing to go there. So find yourself. And recap for this podcast, find yourself a group of people to meet with regularly. If it's once a month, that's great. Once a week is even better. If it's just one other person who is somebody who you think could be a spiritual mentor, just ask them if they will take you to breakfast on occasion and uh, show up at the Waffle House. and, And yeah, just study God's word together. Encourage one another and keep pressing forward and keep running the race, running the good race, keep fighting the good fight, but you can't do it alone and you need to find other people to do it with. You need to find people who are going to remind you who you are in Christ, your identity in Christ and remind you of the freedoms and the responsibilities and the authority that you have because of your relationship with Christ. So that's my encouragement to you today, dear friend. Um, Today's episode, again, is brought to you by youthworshiptraining.com. If your church needs youth worship help, then uh, by all means, check it out. I would love to get involved with you and your church and help you uh, create the next generation of powerful worship leaders for the church and have them start in your youth group. I will see you again very soon. Have a great day.